Valley of Vision, another gospel disposition. See, we don't just live because of the gospel. We live by the gospel. Seeing Jesus in it over and over again re-enchants, as uh, C.S. Lewis says, it captivates the heart again. Seeing him with our constantly dimming eyes in the gospel, they're awakened again. So we see Christ by going back to where we first saw him in the precious gospel. Every letter that Paul writes, his solution for all the problems is an exalted Christ. This gospel is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This, what we're about to read, is a gospel disposition. This is the spiritual maturity. This is the strength in the base of the being. This kind of understanding, this kind of humility, this kind of poverty, this kind of seeing Jesus as what his name is, Savior, which implies my great need to be saved and only he can perform that work. This puts Christ highest above all. This makes Christ the one who excels all others and especially excels ourselves. This is the gospel faith that grants the filling of the Spirit. This actual section is called the Holy Spirit. He writes, as the sun is full of light and the ocean full of water, heaven full of glory, so may my heart be full of thee. Remember, Robert Murray McShane wrote, fill every chamber of my being. He goes on here, vain are all divine purposes of love and the redemption wrought by Jesus, except you work within. In other words, whatever Jesus has done, no matter how grand, which is the grandest thing that could ever be and will ever be, it doesn't actually make any sense until it's believed and its work is begun. Praise God. So he goes through and he says, regenerating by your power, giving me eyes to see Jesus, showing me the realities of the unseen world. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5 shows us to focus on the things unseen instead of the things that are seen. Or as Colossians 3 says, set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. He goes on saying, give me thyself without measure. Oh, Jesus, from his fullness we have all received, praise God. Give me thyself without measure as an unimpaired fountain, as inexhaustible riches. Praise God, Colossians tells us that, that in Christ are hidden all the riches of wisdom, knowledge, understanding all this. He says, I am ashamed of my coldness, my poverty, emptiness, my imperfect vision, languid service, prayerless prayers and praiseless praises. Suffer me not to grieve or resist thee. So he's saying, help me not to grieve you or resist you. I remember Steve Hill preached a sermon, resisting, quenching, and grieving, and how this is how a lot of people live their lives. They resist the Spirit, quench the Spirit, and grieve the Spirit. So we pray, O oh Lord, help us not to grieve thee or resist thee. Come as power, he says, to expel every rebel lust. Only God can deliver us from sin. No amount of efforts or striving can do it. Only God's presence can do it. Come as power to expel every lust, to reign supreme and keep me yours. Praise God. We must put our trust totally in him in order to be kept. We can't even keep ourselves, but we throw ourselves on the keeper of the flame, Christ the great high priest. He says, come as teacher, leading me into all truth, filling me with understanding. Praise God, we can, by the Spirit, gain spiritual understanding, which is a sight of Christ, a right sight of Christ. He says, come as love, that I may adore the Father and love him as my all. Remember, Jesus says, if you uh, love me, 
that my Father will love him, I will love him, and we will make our abode with him, the dwelling place of the human body, God's dwelling place, the human body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, God the Father, the Son, a Trinitarian union set up on the inside. Praise God, may he come as love. He says, come as joy to dwell in me, move in me, and animate me. Yes, joy animates the soul. Joy is a fruit of the seed of the person of the Spirit in the soul. <laughs> He says, come as light, illuminating the scripture, molding me in its laws. The Bible is the only book that demands the author be present when it's read. It is the presence of Jesus that is the light to illuminate the scriptures. He says, come as sanctifier, body, soul, and spirit, holy thine. Come as helper with strength to bless and keep, directing my every step. This is what the Holy Spirit is sent to do as helper and sanctifier. He says, come as beautifier. Oh, praise God. He covers our deformities with his beauty. Come as beautifier, bringing order out of confusion, confusion in the mind, confusion in the heart, and loveliness out of chaos. He does this with the sight of his own beauty. He beautifies those that look at his beauty. Praise God. He says, magnify to me thy glory by being magnified in me and make me redolent of thy fragrance. Father, do something in me and every viewer that we would come to the gospel, which is the light, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face, in person, and work of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel. Lord, illuminate us, waken us up. Lord, open our eyes and open our ears to hear you, that we might see and feel the reality of who you are and walk and grow with you through this wonderful gospel. As we received you, may we continue to walk in you. In your precious name, amen. God bless you guys. If you want to join us, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., uh, we have a time of mentoring for our partners. If you want to become one and jump into the wonderful time that we have together on Tuesday nights, I'll put a link down below. God bless you.